What's going on? It's Jason Heath, and today we are taking a look at the key that teachers foist upon their students far too early. Major. Okay, this intro is getting ridiculous. D major is such a tricky thing. It is the key that most orchestra programs start their students in because it's a great key for violin, viola, and cello. And kind of bass, but uh. The big challenge with D is that there's a big old shift in it, even in a one octave D scale, and a two octave D scale, that goes pretty high up the bass. I think a lot of students get discouraged early on because they're trying to play two octave D major scales and it seems so easy on the other stringed instruments, but because of the nature of the bass and the fact that our low string is an E, we either have to go way up into thumb position or we have to kind of cheat. I guess, and cross over to the open E string. I've always found students kind of look a little sad when the teacher suggests that they go over to the E string. It's kind of like cheating. And while, yeah, it does make a two octave scale more possible on the bass, it's also a little confusing to play the open D and then cross over to the low E. I know I've lost students and I've seen all kinds of students get frustrated by this scale. Like all the other two octave major scales in this series, I'm giving you an easy option, that's option one. I'm giving you more of a template option, it's a little bit more challenging, that's option two. And then an arpeggio fingering, and I feel like I never do good arpeggio fingerings. I think I need help. All these examples have time codes on them so you can skip around between the options. I'll play, I'll teach. And by the way, all of these scales are available in a PDF that you can download in the description below. Let's go with option one. Option one is the most basic way to play a D major scale. In my opinion, get to the G string, go up the G string. That's what I call an old school fingering, but it's a good fingering. What's the big challenge with D major? All these shifts and the fact that you have to go up so high. But the beautiful thing about option one is once we hit the G string, we play two notes for every position. So we got two notes, two notes, two notes, then three notes, then C sharp D. In my experience, those are the trickiest notes to teach somebody. Trying to find that C sharp can be a real challenge, but there are lots of different ways to approach it. One is just have them find that C sharp down an octave. Another one is to find this harmonic on the A string. Make sure you're playing the same C sharp. And once you get a little more comfortable, you can also play the same C sharp harmonic up here in thumb position. So you can play G, A, B, then check C sharp. I have students play that D harmonic at the top. It's fine. You can certainly close it. And it might make more sense to close it. Whatever floats your boat, in my opinion. Option two is a little bit more of a challenge, but it is a template fingering. So we're doing two notes, two notes, two notes, three notes, three notes, three notes. And the beautiful thing about a template fingering is you can take that two, 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 three, 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 and apply it to anywhere on the bass. So I could play two notes, two notes, two notes, three notes, three notes, three notes. I could do the same thing starting on the E string. I could play two notes, two notes, two notes, three notes, three notes. And while this fingering 
takes your thumb off of the G harmonic and that can be a little less comfortable at first. There are a lot of reasons why you wanna be able to move that thumb around and not be dependent on having it be on G. Using a drone pitch to check your intonation is great on this fingering. Take it slow, practice the same note multiple times, and you'll be in good shape on this fingering. The arpeggio fingering. It's an arpeggio fingering. What can I say? I never like my arpeggio finger. The thing you have to wrestle with with arpeggio fingerings is that it's not an even number of notes because you have three notes, three notes, but then the top notes. So you actually have seven total notes, which doesn't neatly fit into positions on the bass typically. So for this one, I decided to play the first octave in the same spot on the bass. The next octave, and then, I go up for that high D. I could have done it a different way. Or something like that, or perhaps open, four, one, thumb, one, two, three. Hmm, maybe I should have done that. But regardless, there are so many different ways to play these scales and arpeggios. The more you know, and the more you practice with, the more you'll be equipped when you run into different musical situations. So practice this fingering, practice any of these fingerings. Again, you can download the PDF of these and all the other 12 two octave major scales in the description below. Whether you're brand new to two octave major scales or just dusting off your chops and getting back into them, I hope that these videos are helpful. My advice is to Practice consistently. Better than our craft is a long journey. It's a day-by-day -day process. Improvement happens, but it's incremental. You might feel like you're taking a step back. You might feel like you have a sudden breakthrough. It can be very inconsistent, but what you can control is your time. If you put in regular time on these, if you use a drone, if you practice slowly, if you record yourself, you will make progress. Thank you so much for watching, and if you want to get a little more scale practice under your belt, check out our one octave minor scales exercises, which have a couple of different fingering options as well.